Hi, everybody. This might be a long one. So you might want to go get you a little drink and maybe even a snack. Just put it on pause and you can catch up on, you know, faster speed or whatever. I'll just sound like a chipmunk for a minute, but as much as I hate it, this might be a long one. Exposing the Truth About Scientology is the name of Stephanie Hutchison's blog, and her latest title is Truth Matters. And I just want to start by saying I'd like to ask her when she's going to start wondering and taking care of the truth, searching for, you know, and taking care of the truth, and stop just trying to run second gens. We're just about to get started. Okay, now, I warned you. <laughs> this is But First Coffee with Susie Oberholtz, and I am Susie Oberholtz, like it or not. And I've got my notes, because you know how I am with my chemo brain, y'all. I just want to dive into Stephanie Hutchison's latest blog and examine some truths and untruths that I find interesting, and I think some of you will, too. I do urge you to go read it yourselves. Don't take my word for anything. This is my opinion. On, I tried to write down the quotes of what she said. I do paraphrase a couple of times and everything else is my opinion, which I mean, she's pretty good at offering. So I'm going to do it too. As is my norm, I invite you to comment via either the live chat or the comment section if you're coming in late. I, prom I do promise to address the chat at the end and to read all comments. And I try to respond to most. <sighs> please be respectful. And if you're a trolley troll, please just crawl back under your bridge because I just don't have time for that. We have adulting to do here. So I read Stephanie's blog. I actually read it three times. Three times seems to be my go-to with things. Once I read it and I'm just pissed, the second time I read it and I'm, you know, kind of trying to take a little bit of it in and, and see if I can agree with her at all. And then the third time I'm just taking notes. I'm just like, okay, I'm still mad. And here's what I'm mad about. So anyway, I rightly assumed it was going to be more of her rubbish but uh, I read it three times while suffering a migraine. While I had several thoughts, which I will share, I mostly came away with a few specific points. And that's what I'm gonna go over. This was my biggest. I'm gonna go first with what my biggest, like, kind of wow moment, you know? was I was thinking that if I were a Scientologist, considering getting out of Scientology, whether it be that I was, you know, under the radar and, and really looking to leave, or if I was just starting my thoughts on it, what would be my first steps? And I figured, you know, those are actually probably, those very first steps are probably what feels huge to them, but what's really kind of baby steps. And I figured, and maybe it's because I know what I know, but I figured that YouTube would be a really good place to start. And I hope that they think that too. So I would one, look at the different SPs and especially the second gens. How are they doing? Are they suffering all the indignation the cult says that they are? Has OSA destroyed their lives? Or is all that just fear? Two, who are all these never ends? Are they awful humans or whatever the cult calls us? Are they horrible creatures or are they supporting the second gens and us who want to leave? And three, supposing that they've not yet heard of the SPT oh, SPTV Foundation. I'd look into the Aftermath Foundation if I was them, which would lead me to their board. 
because that's what you get when you look it up. You don't find any information about if you Google it. You find they're bored, which I think is how they like it. This would have me taking my seat right back in the chair, holding onto those cans, firmly back in the cult, scared to ever even consider leaving. If I read any of the blogs that any of those board members have put out, I wouldn't go to them for help. I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave. I'd be scared. And that breaks my heart. It scares the hell out of me. I mean, a lot of these people are still in a cult. And that would seem better and safer than the Aftermath Foundation at this point. And that's because of people like Stephanie. I had so much hope for the Aftermath Foundation when they announced their plan to, you know, look for new board members and said that they were all going to be stepping down. You know, they were going to all replace themselves and step down. I, I thought, well, you know, this is good. But that was short-lived. And I mean, yeah, I was still salty over the whole situation with Aaron. But I really did have hell or hope. Sorry, I'm tongue-tied today. But then I figured out that the new members are just more of the same. They're just Mike Render 2.0 and Mark Headley 2.0. And, you know, it's, it's the same. No one stepped down. And three, the new pit bull is actually a more vicious version of the others. Pit bull meaning... Stephanie Hutchison, if you didn't gather that already, which I'm sure you did. My hope now races to the SPTV Foundation and their diverse board who truly support each other and every member of the community. And they actually do work to get people out of the cult. And they encourage ex-members and never ends to start channels and do whatever they can large or small, to end the cult of Scientology. They never tell us that we need to sit down, that we need to shut up, that we don't know what we're talking about. The Aftermath Foundation, well, the board members anyway, because the board isn't actually a living, breathing thing, we can only look to the board members to see their stance on things. And they seem intent to take it upon or to take down the new foundation, board member by board member by board member. Why? Well, I have two reasons. I'm sure there's more, but my main two reasons are the first one is jealousy. They most clearly, most clearly render just cannot stand that Aaron has made a success of himself or any of our successes for that matter. Because even with a little tiny channel like mine, I'm succeeding with zero notoriety. I can't rely on mother Leah to help me succeed. Our small successes are equal to theirs to their large successes by comparison. And they can't stand that. And I'm just one. They don't even know me, but I'm just using myself as an example. The second thing that I think makes them want to take down that foundation is fear. They're terrified that they'll lose their rev revelance. If any other board succeeds, they'll lose what they perceive as power. SPTV and the new SPTV Foundation promotes community, inclusivity, and these seem to be the enemy of the Aftermath Foundation and the cult, for that matter. 
In my opinion, Stephanie Hutchison's needs to put the time she devotes to trolling channels, looking for things to twist like a pretzel in her blog. She needs to take that time and do her job. There are people who either want to escape Scientology or already have and need help. And that's supposed to be her job. Sadly, I don't believe they are crazy busy like they claim. If they are so busy all the time, three times as busy as they were when Aaron was on the board, they wouldn't have time for all this trolling and all this nonsense. I don't have time to do it. And I'm nowhere near as, bu as busy as they say they are. When I finished her blog the first time, I wondered who's next? <laughs> Can we expect a hit by hit by hit of every board member on the SPTV Foundation? And then will it be SPTV supporters or those who donate to the foundation? Creators who speak out against Stephanie's tyranny? Will your hate or will your board members start hate blogging about people that we've helped or that you've helped, I'm sorry. Oh, wait a minute. They already have blogged about people that they've helped, right? What about people that they promised to help and then didn't? They've already blogged about those too. Who's safe? Stephanie, when will you see that you are the problem? You and your other board members are the ones throwing mud. We, the SPTV community, keep trying to wash that mud off and continue to fight the cult. But it feels like the Aftermath Foundation is a secondary cult. It's like we're fighting two. Neither one follow any kind of rules. They make them up as they go along. And they don't make any sense. The SPTV community stands together. Second gens, never ends, protesters, all of us, even those of us who disagree. We are all included and safe. We leave the people that we don't agree with alone. Squabbles happen, we're human. And between some people, squabbles happen. But we don't seek to destroy, and we don't seek to find your run. That's a Scientology thing. That's culty. And yeah, that's the Aftermath Foundation as of late. Okay, guys, Stephanie's hate blog, if you haven't read it already, she starts out by sharing an exchange between her and Aaron <laughs> about his being voted off the, a the Aftermath Foundation board. She tells him that she's sorry and that, you know, to keep up the good fight and all this. And, but when you, when I read it, you can form your own opinion, but I mean, what I see is, one, Stephanie fishing for information, probably to pass to render. Maybe clout chasing, trying to have the information, you know, be the one that Aaron confided in. And two, I see Aaron kind of being mindful of what he says and who he says it. I mean, he probably knew he's not dumb. He probably knew enough that when he was talking to her, she was probably going to repeat it. I mean, he did, he was generous enough to talk to her a little bit, but he wouldn't really discuss his personal life. And I thought that that was out of respect for his wife and his kids. He just basically talked about that, that it was because of him doing that show about the lawyer that didn't show up, that he didn't name him. That's pretty much all that he told her. And I think that's what pissed her off was she knew the truth. 
and she wanted Aaron to tell her the truth. And he didn't. Not the whole truth. He didn't owe her even anything he did tell her. Stephanie goes on to show an excerpt of a previous blog asking people to allow Mike, the Headleys, Aaron, and all the wonderful, normal human people to be human, to have basic struggles like everyone does, and to learn, grow, fail, and move on. I'd like to ask Stephanie for some of that same grace <laughs> so that maybe we could all just move on. Allow us to do all this learning, growing, failing, and finally moving on. Nobody can do anything because we can't stop fighting her. I warned you it was long, guys. <laughs> During all the shit show after the ousting of Aaron from the board, she created, what did I say? Oh, she put that blog post, put the link to that on his um, Facebook page. And I mean, she put the, the link for the whole thing, not just that little excerpt. And she's really upset that it got removed three times. She said that eventually Dylan Gill sent her a Facebook messenger call that said, well, the one sentence she quotes said, quote, according to her, I don't, you know, we are not posting anything that shows both sides. Which doesn't sound great, right? But isn't it awful easy to take one sentence or maybe a partial sentence and just post that in the blog if you're trying to make somebody look bad? To me, my first thought whenever I saw the whole we're not posting anything that tells both sides was when pot meat kettle because the aftermath board is no, notorious for deleting any comments or anything that doesn't agree with them 100%. I mean, if it's even just neutral, they delete it. The only thing that really gets left is anything that's high praise for King Mike or his merry minions. Everything else is gone. She continues to say that Dylan told her that he is good friends with everyone involved and speaks to them daily, which she then claims is completely untrue because we all know she would know everything. But didn't Aaron also believe that he was good friends with everyone involved and that he spoke to them daily and that he socialized with them and he went on cruises and other vacations and stuff with them? So if that's true, Dylan being wrong, maybe he was wrong, but it's not quite so shocking. Is this on Dylan or is this on Render and his minions? She apparently told Dylan, again, y'all, <laughs> not posting anything showing both sides was absolutely biased. Again, the pot calling the kettle black. Apparently, Dylan got angry with her and said, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I bet she was terrified. <laughs> Stephanie says that that caused her to hang up the phone in tears. I mean, who knew that she was so sensitive? No wonder she considers everything said about her or the rest of the board to be an attack. <laughs> Oddly, she's not so sensitive about everyone else's feels. 
Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just, oh my God. I have to get on to my granddaughter. I'm like, don't be saying that. That's not, you don't need to be like, oh my God, grandpa. I want to go feed the chickens now. <laughs> he doesn't leave in tears. Oh. Oh God. And <laughs> y'all, sometimes I write something down and I'm like, was that something that I was like being a smart ass about or did she really say it? But she did. So let's not forget that she said that Aaron didn't call her to check on her after that conversation like a true friend would do. Well, I'm sorry, but if she's a friend, he don't need any enemies. Oh. But in true friend fashion, y'all, she did call Aaron after his false arrest in L.A. where he got arrested when he was attacked by the, the dog guy, you know, the dog man or whatever they called him. And she said she gave him some information about Tim Tallman, and she says that he used it, but that he never responded to her to her message. Or to, I think she actually emailed him. I don't think she called him. But, you know, I just kept thinking, Stephanie, how about you contact him on a regular Tuesday or a Thursday or, you know, whenever, and just be like, hey, just checking on you. How you doing? You know, that's what friends do. They don't just check on you when you got arrested or when you got booted from a board or something. It goes on and on and on, y'all. You'll have to read it. But she then pouted because Aaron, in anger, on a video or on a live, which he did, I saw it. He said to keep his wife's name out of her mouth. Poor Stephanie swears that she never slammed Heather or the girls. But without missing a beat, she starts in on Aaron. You know, the Aftermath Foundation's favorite whipping post. She said she met Heather. I've got one of those little gnats that those little, what are they call them? Teeny tiny little gnats that come in off of flowers and fruit and stuff. We went to the farmer's market and we're going to have to go back outside. Sorry if I keep doing this. Okay, sorry. She said that she met Heather and even had dinner with her in Clearwater. Then she says that while Aaron was all over YouTube announcing that he was in an open marriage, and I'm trying to read these because I don't want to get her quotes wrong. <laughs> and was now separated from his wife, acting as though that now justified his actions as not adultery. She tweeted in Heather's defense and said, that is adultery. <laughs> well, I can't figure out why she called or why she felt so called to have to clear that up. Heather didn't ask for her assistance that I'm aware of. Maybe Heather doesn't consider it adultery. Does she know if Heather was bothered by it or even doing the same thing? I mean, I don't know. I don't have any reason to think she was, but I mean, it's possible, right? It's not my business, but it's not Stephanie's either. And I kept thinking that, you know, Aaron made that announcement. He didn't want to do it. You know, he cried and everything else. But he made that announcement because it was pretty clear by things that Render and Mark Headley and them had said that they were going to tell it. They were going to go um, public with it. And so he, you know, that's what we do a lot of times, right? We, like, if somebody's going to do something, we just nip it in the bud and do it first. And I just want to say to Stephanie that in her opinion, it's adultery. 
but maybe it's not to Aaron and Heather. And that's who opinion matters. Whether I think it is or not, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm sorry. I love you guys. But even what you think doesn't matter. We can think, you know, if you think it's adultery or whatever, we can think he's the scum and I'm not going to watch him anymore. I'm not going to support him. They were right. You know, or we can think it's his life, his marriage. You know. Stephanie said no woman should have to endure her husband hooking up with multiple random partners. It's disrespectful, demeaning, and by all definition, adultery. Again, in her opinion, that's what was happening. And if they were in a committed marriage, I might tend to agree. But according to Aaron, they had an agreement. And so then that's on them, right? It's not on Stephanie. You know, she complained because some because Liz called her a hall monitor. Well, so did I. But I copied Liz. I don't know what she is now. I mean, what's, I mean, hall monitor. She's not a marriage counselor because she's not trying to help them. She's just trying to trash one of them. I don't think she really knows what the legal definition of adultery is because I'm going to tell you I got when I got a divorce 20 something years ago the courts made it absolutely clear that I had to have photographic evidence of adultery to be able to use it in the courts I wouldn't even have had to have had photographic proof of murder but I had to have it for adultery I'm not saying if that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that was my experience. It didn't say anywhere in my court proceedings that Stephanie Hutchison got to decide if my husband cheated on me or not. Stephanie says that her husband, poor man, he ate and she ate dinner with Aaron and his wife in Clearwater. So she knows how he treated Heather. She says, one, that he was cold whenever she spoke, dismissive, harsh, and not one iota of warmth or kindness. Two, that Heather wasn't feeling well. And so she asked the waiter for herbal tea. And she said that Aaron acted disgusted and rolled his eyes. Now, both of these, she doesn't have any proof of any of this. And the way that she goes after Aaron all the time, I'm kind of include, you know, inclined to be like, mm, I don't know, girl. A little bias going on there. She says that if he was comfortable enough to treat her like that with them there, how does he treat her behind closed doors? Well, according to Aaron, he doesn't really treat her much at all because they while at the time they were living in the same house, they were living in different sections of the house, didn't eat together, didn't sleep together, didn't cook together, didn't spend time together. They just lived there. So I don't know how he was treating her. It's not my problem. And I don't know what it has to do with the Aftermath Foundation or the SPTV Foundation. I, I don't know. I can't decide what she's even trying to accomplish here. All I can say is that, Stephanie, that's your opinion of the situation. And I don't have to agree with it because you don't have any proof of it. But let's assume that you are 100% correct. I'm in a happy, committed relationship with Mark. But there are times that he is on my last nerve, y'all. And I can come off pretty cold. Maybe even harsh. I don't know. Sometimes it's really just an attempt by me to bite my tongue because we've maybe been in a little bit of a tiff and then we've had to be around people and it, the tiff is not really over, but we're just kind of, you know, pushing it back, y'all. Pushing it back and we're going to deal with it later. 
or not. Now I'm going to tell you, at one time, we were having some issues, not to the separating point, but issues. And there were times that I was annoyed at him for everything that he did or didn't do or even how he looked at me. So, Stephanie, your opinion is just that. You could be right, but you could be wrong. I can see coming off as cold or harsh, especially, I mean, obviously they're not getting along great or they wouldn't be separated at the time and now getting a divorce. And she was brought to tears by Dylan saying, oh my God. So is she really the best person to choose what's cold or harsh? I mean, maybe Aaron was being insensitive. He might've been being a jerk. It happens. But that doesn't make him a step below David Miscavige, like Matt Pesh said. I wonder if Stephanie's gonna write a hate blog about Matt Pesh comparing Aaron to Miscavige. Probably not. Stephanie says that for calling out Aaron and others, she's been subjected to hate judgment by people who don't know her or her experiences. She's been attacked and condemned by people who have heard Aaron and believed him. And I just want to say, no, Stephanie, we heard you. We heard you and Mike and Mark and Matt. We heard you all. Heard you loud and clear. She also says that she defended Aaron more than once and caught hell for it. By who? Render? Is that why she's doing this? Like to make up for that? Like, you know, let's kiss and make up. <laughs> you know, they did say that the, this blog was his birthday gift from her. But you remember a while, just a little while, a bit ago, she went after uh, Dylan, who is one of the nicest people that, I mean, come on. But guess who she goes after next? Liz Gale. Liz Gale is another one of the nicest most soft-spoken people i mean unless y'all know something i don't know i i think she's pretty dang nice and she got fired up a little bit ago but i think she had rights liz said that she'd like to see she did like a little short y'all need to watch it find that one and watch it it's, she says a lot but Liz said she'd like to see the Aftermath Foundation do something to, to differentiate between what their, you know, what is their board's stance on things and what is their board member's stance on things. That it's been really difficult lately because there's this wind or this weird blending of personal and professional positions, which I agree. Stephanie reminded us in the blog that she now puts disclaimers stating that this is her personal opinion. But I'd like to say, disclaimer or not, a member of a board talking about the very subject or people the board deals with will never be able to truly separate itself from their board position. And as the Aftermath Foundation has rule against members talking shit against anyone also fighting against the cult or helping people trying to leave the cult. How can a board member continue to write the blogs that Stephanie writes? Aaron couldn't do a video where he complained about a lawyer that didn't show up in court and didn't name the lawyer. I mean, that got him thrown off the 
the board and it's gotten how many blogs now written about him? Who's the keyboard warriors now, Stephanie? She says that she's not allowed to hurt opinion. That she's only a member of the aftermath board. <clears throat> but the board members make up the foundation, Stephanie. The aftermath foundation is not a people. It's a thing. So yes, the board members will be held accountable, good or bad, for their opinion or their behavior. That's just the facts. That's what you all said, right? When it was Aaron. You can't have it both ways. You just, you just can't. Well, I mean, you can, because you are, but can you? Then she goes back to Liz Gale. I'm getting close to done. And then I'm going to go through the chat. <laughs> She's mad that Liz called her a hall monitor. Actually, Liz said she wasn't a hall monitor. She didn't get to be one, but tit for tat. I think I need merch that says that. Just on a little sidebar. Tit for tat or tat for tit since I don't have you know, breast cancer took this area and I have a big tattoo there. So wouldn't that be funny? Tit for tat or tat for tit. I don't know. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> was Stephanie telling the protesters how to protest? She says that she wasn't. I say she was. Actually, she said, nope. <laughs> <sighs> But she, you know, she didn't really tell them what to do. She told them what not to do because that, you know, she just kept saying that, that Alex was the only one that was doing it right. I mean, literally Alex was the only person in the whole wide world, basically, that's doing it right and that everyone else was wrong. And that's not against that. I'm not griping about Alex. I don't know him. I think that he can be a lot of help in the situation, but I also see where and why a lot of people don't like him. I don't really have an opinion. I've not dealt with him enough to, or at all, personally. Stephanie said that she took offense, that anyone took offense <laughs> to her quoting the LA Times when the reporter called the protesters a gaggle of anti-Scientology protesters brawling publicly with the organization. Stephanie, honey, We're not as stupid as you think we are. We understand that that was the paper's quote, not yours. I personally don't think that you could come up with something that clever. And I'm a retired newspaper person. I was a reporter and a publisher. I owned it. So I absolutely understand the concept of quotes and who makes them and who doesn't, and you know, quoting them. But... <laughs> By quoting that the way she did and by not qualifying that she disagreed with the quotes, she's claiming that quote, at least on some levels, she's agreeing with it. She's not claiming that she made it, but she's agreeing with it. I suspect she knows that. And I mean, yeah, it's very passive aggressive. And leaves her open to cry foul and say they they're misquoting me i didn't say that but i'm not buying it girl she asked what she's done to upset people she says that she wrote an article in support of alex because he was called a liar and a grifter and a fraud by Aaron. Yeah, we're back to Aaron. All I thought was, first of all, don't you people ever get sick and tired of hearing yourselves say his name? I get tired of hearing him say his name. I'm pretty sure he probably gets sick of hearing him say his name. 
And second, her article did very little defending of Alex. She kind of used him to be able to show that she was being positive about something. But she used him to be able to say, he's doing this and they're doing this wrong. And he's doing this right. And they're doing this wrong. And he's doing this right. And they're doing this wrong. <laughs> you said that Alex has no basis for his claims against, or you said Aaron, sorry, has no basis for his claims against Alex because he didn't know him when he was in the cult. And he's never been to the UK. <clears throat> well, Stephanie, did you know Aaron when Aaron was in the cult? No. Then how can you speak on what he's doing now? And what the hell does the UK have to do with it? I mean, it doesn't matter where it's at. I mean, I don't, I, I just need to. Has she, ever, has she ever heard of the internet? You know, I've got friends in the UK that I talk to all the time. I've got friends in Australia. I've got friends all over the world that I talk to every day. And not YouTube friends even. I mean, I do talk to you all, you know, every day just about. But I'm talking about other friends that I've made through one thing or another. But I guess because Aaron had not at that time been to the UK, he didn't have any right to say anything about Alex. Cause she calls Aaron speaking about Alex hypocritical irony. Well, I put that firmly back on her. I think that's a pretty good estimation of what she is. Then she goes back to Liz Gale. And I really am just about done. <laughs> Uh, Liz called Stephanie's attacks on the second gens in her last blog cultural appropriation. She even gave the, the uh, definition of it. Stephanie says, because I don't have the right to speak about Aaron. There he is again, y'all. Or the way he does things because I don't know their trauma. Stephanie asks, isn't that like saying you don't have the rank? First of all, Stephanie. Liz was talking about all second gens, not Aaron. You twisted it to being about Aaron because that's what you do with everything. It's all about Aaron. You know she was talking about all of them which is, is why you quoted her saying their trauma instead of his trauma. Words matter, Stephanie. Words matter. And second, is it's nothing like saying that you don't have the rank. That's Scientology speak, which you weren't in. Which is kind of what she's talking about. <laughs> That's cultural appropriation. And then third, Scientology speak. Oh, that little bug. There's just one. <laughs> it's off the bananas. Scientology speak is a made up language for a made up religion cult. And fourth, cultural appropriation is real. And you step all in it, Stephanie. You step all in it. And by the way, I'd like to tell her that Alex is a grown-ass man who is more than capable of defending himself and has in the tussle with Aaron. I mean, it's not like that Aaron just like says stuff and that Alex never says anything back. I mean, they fuss back and forth. And do I like it? No. Do I understand it? Yes. It's human. Which, didn't she say that we that everybody should allow all these wonderful people, and she included Aaron, to be human? 
I'll have to check my notes, but I'm pretty sure that's what she said. <laughs> I don't know if, I, if Aaron's right about Alex. I don't know. But that's Alex and Aaron's fight, not hers. And they're one person and another person. It's not a foundation going after an entire group of people that have had trauma. You know, although I think that they're all defendable and they're deserving of defense, I don't think I need to defend Aaron, Dylan, Liz, or anyone else that she's attacked. But I'm calling you out, Stephanie. I'm calling you out for your word salad and twisting of words to serve your purpose of kissing Mike Rinder's ass. Stephanie asks if no one else is allowed to defend themselves. No one else is allowed to challenge the attacks. What attacks, Stephanie? We just sit around wondering who's next, right? I mean, I'll tell you what, what really chapped my butt was that Marilyn Honig felt the need to go on her channel and confess a very private time in she and Duncan's life. Why? Because who's next? If people call Stephanie out over her crap, they're attacked viciously. Simply remaining friends with or not trashing renders public enemy number one Aaron Smith Levin gets people attacked. So Marin, Marilyn preemptively told her business before Stephanie could. I mean, she probably still will. But at least we got her side first. We know what the truth is or, you know, it was Marilyn and Duncan that lived it. Wasn't horrible, but you know, I'm sure if Stephanie knew who I am, she would try to dig up some dirt on me. Very fair game of you, Stephanie. <laughs> very Osa. Again, very culturally appropriational, Appreci appropriation ish. <laughs> I always need one that says ish because I. It just works. But I'm an open book, so dig away. No one who matters to me gives a rat's ass what you say or what you dig up or what you lie about. Ask me. I'll tell you. All the dirt. Because really, you attacking me would get me more clicks. And as I say... I do it for the clicks. Every YouTuber does, whether they want to admit it or not. I mean, not only for the clicks, but <laughs> clicks are kind of important. If you don't subscribe and like and make comments and talk in the chat, we don't have a channel. Well, we can have a channel, but it's not going anywhere. <laughs> That's why I pretty much refuse to click on anything that the precious Aftermath Foundation board has to say. I refuse to give them the clicks. I like to find somebody that's already done it and posted it on their channel. In closing, Stephanie claims that she'd rather be focusing on Scientology. What's stopping you, Stephanie? What is stopping you? You keep bringing this crap on yourself. I say, if you'd rather be working Focusing on Scientology, prove it. I freaking dare you. Put up or shut up. And Stephanie, let us get back to work. You get back to work. Have you even started work yet? We have work to do. And you're starting to act and sound like Mike Rinder's Osa.
that's all I got to say about that. I know, y'all. It was a book. Remember, when I started in the newspaper business, I got paid by the word. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm still trying to learn how to talk, y'all. So, I'm going to go to the chat and see what we got here. I'm going to start at the beginning. Clearwater Chad says, hopefully not Marty Rathburn. I just, it's such a glare. There we go. Chad, hit the like button. George Massey. Massey, I'm sorry. I, I'm, let me get a drink. That was a lot of talking, wasn't it? Okay. Auntie Steph hasn't learned much since her last outburst, has she? She's a disgrace. Absolutely. He also says her proclivity to judge people's personal and private lives should be should disqualify her from any involvement with survivors seeking help. I agree. Honestly, George, I could like erase everything that I just said and print that. And honestly, it's, I mean, other than a few facts and wisecracks here and there, you said it. According to Auntie Steph, Aaron has crimes he needs to answer for. She seems to be using Scientology's definition of crimes. She does say that a lot. She, you know, she said that he has crimes that he needs to answer. She didn't list them. She didn't even really say what it was. That was in the last blog because... Lord knows that every blog is secretly about Aaron. Secretly. <laughs> Constance June says, George Massey, yes, she also posted some screenshots that could ruin people's lives. Sorry, like when you have screenshots that can ruin people's lives, seems like Scientology tactics to me. Mm-hmm. Hi. Hello, everyone. We'll be listening while working. K.S. Esky Gal. Got my drink and snacks. <laughs> See? Now there's a smart woman. Denise says, hello, Susie. How are you? I was worried when you didn't have your scheduled live a couple of days ago. Actually, I did. Um, we tried to schedule it, and... Um, StreamYard was acting crazy on my on my channel. It showed that I scheduled it like six times and I can't get it to erase them, but it's actually on Mamaw's Life. So if you go to Mamaw's Life, you can see it. And StreamYard was messing up so bad that it wouldn't let us also stream it to my channel. So it's just on her channel right now. So and I'm feeling pretty good right now. Tired. I've been gone all day. We had a bunch of errands to run, so I'm doing good. I'm tired. I got my chemo medicine yesterday, <clears throat> but I don't start that till sometime the 1st of May. I'll keep y'all posted on that, though. Clearwater Chad says, hi, everyone. Stephanie P. says, hi, Susie and chat. <laughs> this should be interesting. <gasps> yeah. Everybody's saying hi to each other. I, I'm telling you guys, I love that because I'm serious. When I got into this, I said I wanted to build a community. And so every time I see you guys chatting amongst yourselves, it just feels like a community to me. So Elaine Gillette says, thank you for speaking up. Well, I don't know if everybody agrees with that, but hi, Susie and chat on replay to catch up. Hugs to everyone. Cinderella's glass slipper says she is insufferable. Isn't she though? I, I know. Every time she mentions her husband, I just think, oh, that poor man. I mean, he might be a total jerk too. Who knows? And if he wasn't, he might be now. I do not believe anything she says about Dylan. I don't either. I, it really got me that the quotes that she had on him were real choppy. And I thought, you know what? You, she'll put a couple paragraphs quoting what she said, 
and then one little line of what he said. And that doesn't, that don't seem right to me. It just, it just smacks of dirty. I don't know. Maybe not. Dylan is one smart guy and the most Zen guy I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. He's so mellow. I'm just like, I, I mean, oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry that oh my god I'm just maybe I should get merch or I guess Dylan should he should get a shirt that says oh my god dot 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 Dylan Gill yeah <laughs> because mm, crushing words by Dylan Gill Yes, I don't believe that about Dylan. A sentence taken out of a conversation can mean anything. Absolutely. <laughs> Judy Kaufman, Stephanie, you'd better leave my Susie alone. Aw, we've got her back as well as all the other second gens, or all the second gens and the third gens. Amen. I don't know if you um, if you haven't seen it already. I'm not. I was never in Scientology or anything, but this is this is a funny that I told on, on a uh, mamaw's life. I worked for a church and there was a, you'll have to go watch it, but there was a, an uproar and I brought some stuff to the attention of the deacons and the deacon, like the head deacon, I don't know what they called him. I can't remember. He told me one day, he said, you're being so suppressant. <laughs> <laughs> and he said it more than once and I didn't know anything about Scientology at this time. So, I mean, if I had, if it was now, I'd be like, Oh my, I'd be like, Dylan, Oh my God. <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> but, um, you know, I didn't think anything of it at the time, but he did say it. And then I was basically, um, told you either, sneak in for services and sneak out when they're over before anybody sees you and blah, 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 or don't come. And I chose not to go. So, and my church family, this is 18 years ago. And I grew up in this church and they don't, and a lot of them are my family and they don't look at me or speak to me. So I went in Scientology, but I identify as an SP and that's why I don't mean to be like stealing their culture. And I, I don't really identify as an SP, so don't tell anybody that, but it, it, you know, in a joking kind of way, I, I wear a bracelet that says SP y'all <laughs> just because whenever I heard about Scientology calling people that I was just like, Oh my God, that's what they said about me. They multiple times said I was suppressive. So I thought, boy, I'm not suppressing anything. I told it all. Adultery is not a crime. It's the business of the married couple and no one else's. It's pure character assassination. Absolutely. Auntie Steph is chief of the morality police. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, yes. Amen. She's like the National Enquirer. I hadn't thought of that. Hmm. I wonder if I could find a, make a, some kind of little picture with that on there. Hmm, maybe. <laughs> Behind closed doors, pure speculation. Anti Steph speculate or specialty. Absolutely. Absolutely. I wonder this. I think she's jealous because she wants Aaron. I think she does have a little crush on him. And I think she got a great big whopping crush on Mike Rinder. But I think she does have a little bit of a crush on Aaron. She, I don't know. There's a little something, something going on there with her. Why doesn't she address what Mitch Brisker said is right? Why doesn't she say something about that? Because she only talks about Aaron. <laughs> And she talks about other people so that she's not only talking about Aaron. Because she really, I mean, she says kind of crappy things about other people, but mm, not really. 
Absolutely. Now, I did think this. Stephanie is pointing one finger at people with three pointed back at herself. Yes. Judgy McJudge <laughs> is complaining about being judged. The hypocrisy is monumental. <laughs> Very good. George is winning the, the chat today. He's got a bunch of them. Constance June, exactly. And it's not a good look. Nope. She needs to resign from the board along with Mike Rinder. I, I agree. Has she even gone to work yet? I mean, what have they done? I mean, I don't know how she has time. Because she quotes all these other videos and stuff that she watches. You know, she knows what everybody's saying. So I can't even do it. And I don't have a job. And I'm not on the board of anything. Like, this is my job. And I don't make any money at that. Oh, not yet, anyway. Yes, Liz Gale offered constructive criticism and advice on how to improve the Aftermath Foundation. She has such a big heart. She does. She is a sweet, sweet lady. I, I just... I have so much just respect for her. Joel McCoyne says, hi folks, late but made it. How dare you? <laughs> I'm teasing. Liz Gale lost everything after going on the Aftermath show and had to start over. She is a beautiful person inside and out. I agree. <laughs> Cinderella's glass slipper. I love the tap for tit shirt idea. <laughs> I know. I thought of that. I was like, oh my God, that, that's maybe a, I might have to do that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I could bring in the, the breast cancer part of my channel that way, you know. Exactly. She referenced the quote to support her claims. John Van Ges Geest. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, that's what she did. That's what you do when you weren't smart enough to come up with the quote, but you like the quote. So you use the quote to support what you're saying and get the quote associated with you until it bites you in the ass. And you go, oh, I didn't say that. If you have problems with that, that's what she said. If anybody has a problem with that, they need to take it up with, and she named the author and with the LA Times. And I thought, no, I'm taking it up with you. Because I didn't have a problem with it when he said it. I mean, it was stupid. But I didn't have a problem when he said it. I have a problem when you said it. Because of how you said it. And the fact that none of the charges, because it was talking about when three of them had gotten arrested. And so, I mean, no, they weren't brawling. They were standing there and got attacked. And they are the ones that ended up in jail. And all the charges weren't. It's not that they were dropped. They never existed. Like they were trying to get the charges. And the DA said no. So. <laughs> and all that had happened before she wrote it. I mean, you know, whenever I had the paper, there were times, and this was so annoying. There were times that we would write an article. And I would, I mean, be so careful to quote everybody and get all my facts straight. And I mean, everything. And then lo and behold, in the next week, something would change and charges would be dropped or some more would be added or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. They would change a fire to arson where before it was that it wasn't suspicious, you know, or, or vice versa, that it had been kind of named as suspicious, but then they were saying, no, you know, we found out that it wasn't that kind of thing. And so I'd have to go back in and say, you know, we reported last week, blah, 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 but this is the new information, blah, 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 blah. People say, see, she lies. <laughs> but this isn't what Stephanie did. Stephanie had all the correct information and chose to use this little point over here and not expand on it and tell the truth. That is purposefully 
lying, lying by omission. It's what it is. Constance June says, I don't know of another charity that would put up with the board member saying when you have screenshots that can ruin people's lives, friendships and relationships, and nobody wants to test you. Yeah. Hi from North Georgia, everyone. Everybody talking again. Good. This is exactly the greatest fact checker in the Galactic Federation. So the fact that she used the LA Times quote without challenge means it fit her biased narrative. 100%. But she don't see it that way. Well, she knows. She's not dumb. I don't believe that she's dumb. You know, some people have said she's so stupid that she does. I know. Mm -mm. You don't accidentally. You do not accidentally do the shit she does. Sorry. But you don't. I mean, you might accidentally step in it every once in a while. I certainly have. But she, she's not stupid. She knows exactly what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's chicken ass stuff. She's using the LA times quote to support her claim and then says that she's being take that it's being taken out of context when she's called out on it. Absolutely. That's what she did. I mean, she goes, she said, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but she said, if anybody has a problem with that quote, they need to take it up with blank and tell the, the writer's name and the LA times. That's their quote, not mine. No, it's yours. You owned it, girl. It's yours now. Even if you're not smart enough to come up with it on your own, you were smart enough to steal it. <laughs> George has moved on. <laughs> Inappropriate heifer says, I can't stomach Alex at all. But I think everyone knows that by now. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of noticed. Yeah, he was on the dirty stay ups a couple nights ago. And I was like, oh, mm, oh, <laughs> you were not rude, girl. You weren't. But you could cut the tension with a knife. <laughs> and I loved it. I wanted to say. If you can't say anything nice, just come sit over here by me. Because <laughs> I don't know all the stories and you could tell me. We need like a little, I need to send you my phone number and we can text when he's on things or when anybody we don't like is on things. And we can, I shouldn't say that, but anyway, you know, seriously, there's a couple that I'd like a little backstory on and we can just text each other. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I live in Cairo on the banks of denial. Uh, yeah, there's George going with that T2D -D flowing. I really do know, know these words. I don't know why I'm so tongue-tied today. I think it's because I've not really been talking much. And then today, my husband and I spent the day together and we talked the whole time. And then I read this novel. <laughs> y'all. Oh, this is going in the shredder. Oh, Lord. Inappropriate heifer, Susie. I love you so much. I love you too, girl. I really do. I love that Aaron gave that support to Aaron in that way. We all have flaws and have made mistakes. Absolutely. And that's what is so funny is whenever she sits there and says, you know, she says Mike and Mar or Mark or Mike and the Headleys and, you know, blah, 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 and Aaron and, you know, allow these wonderful humans to be humans and, you know, make mistakes and grow and fail and, you know, move on. Well, move the hell on. We get it. She don't like him. <laughs> or does she? <laughs> Me thinks the lady does protest too much.
That's the shit that I can't stand. That wasn't anyone's business, but Marilyn and Duncan's. Amen. I cried. That's their business. And that was years ago. But I understand her telling it. You know? Years ago, this is not near as, you know. But years ago, I had a lap band put in. I had gotten kind of heavy, <clears throat> very heavy, and I wanted to lose the weight and I had tried to diet and exercise. I mean, and I like to diet and I like to exercise. I mean, I, I like to eat well and I love to exercise. So I couldn't figure out why I was gaining weight. And so I went and got a lap band. The first thing I did, I had the newspaper at the time and I wrote an article about getting the lap band and how it was going and everything about it because one of my dear friends who was also the publisher of a local newspaper told me when you start dropping weight they're gonna say you're on drugs get ready for it so preemptively I told my story then they couldn't say anything was it anybody's business no but then a few months later I did lose some weight a lot of weight and a few months later, I started gaining weight again. Well, I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, there's another one. Can't think of what it is. But anyway, three different autoimmune diseases. And they said that had they known that I had those, that I wouldn't have even been eligible for the lap band because what it does is that your insides swell and it closes the lap band completely off because what was happening was everything that I ate, no matter how much I chewed it, came right back up. And so I was then eating a lot of soups and stuff. Well, you get sick of just like chicken noodle soup. So you're eating soups that have like a cream base and everything. So you're then eating more calories than what you should. Or anything that I did eat had to have like gravies and sauces and you know tons of stuff on it sorry my socks falling off it's driving me nuts that's what I get for going just in my sock feet but anyway so then everybody in town started talking about how fat I was getting <laughs> so I was just like you can't win you know you just can't win Marilyn should have not felt a need to release personal information I understand and I agree but I also understand why she did it and it breaks my heart and it pisses me off. Not at Marilyn, at Stephanie. Because I think Marilyn really has a legitimate fear that Stephanie would take what happened and run with it. Can you imagine? I mean, the woman don't care if it's true or, you know, if this much is true and then you balloon it out and make this huge story out of it. She doesn't care. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Her job has been to smear people. I know, seriously, did Rinda really leave Scientology? I'm not sure anymore. I questioned that too, but I'll tell you what. I on it, I think he did. I, <clears throat> I think that he left because he started getting his ass beat by Miscavige. He didn't seem to, you know, it didn't seem to chase him off when it was all the Sea Org members, you know, just it's normal people. But by golly, when it was him, he packed his shit and was gone and took stuff with him to sink Miscavige, supposedly, which I'm not completely sure whether he's used or not. I mean, if he had everything he said he did and that he turned everything over to the FBI that he said he did, then I don't think we'd be here. I don't think they'd be here. What I think is I think that you can take the man out of Scientology, but you can't take the Scientology out of the man. Not with everybody. There's a lot of them out there that have absolutely left. But with Render, I don't think they ever took the Scientology out of him. And I think that he has got such a holier than thou, just his ego. I'm telling you, his ego is something else. It is 
something else. And I think that he would like to have his own little cult. That's what I think. And I don't know who he thinks is going to be the members because right now it looks to me like that they've got like six or eight, maybe nine cult leaders. And uh, I don't see many members. And he seems to be chasing off anybody because I'm, I'm serious on the part where I started, where I said that if I was a cult member leaving, the minute I looked into the aftermath board, it breaks my heart, but I would stay. Because, you know, they say that the, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't, and or something like that. That's what it means. And I don't know. That and the fact that if they leave, they're going to lose their family and friends and everything. I'd stay. And it breaks my heart. And that's why we have got to work and get the SPTV Foundation really going and really publicized and, and really, really out there. Because we got to help these people. We got to help them. They just, it breaks my heart. It, it, it makes me sick to my stomach, you know. It sucks that she feels that she needs to get ahead of something that wasn't bad because some <laughs> dipshits might try to smear her. I know. I know. And even if it was terrible, even if it was horrible, it's not. But even if it was. Thank you. Hey, Mandy McGee. You have her as a Facebook friend. Uh, do you know she blocked me on Twitter? So I guess she does know who I am. After the last one I wrote, I, I can't see any of her stuff on Twitter. So I'm assuming I'm blocked or X, whatever it is. <laughs> Boys. Yep, look at you, 2D flowing over there. Oh, wow. 617 subscribed. I hadn't even looked. <laughs> there's a lot of high, or there's a lot of overlap with high control groups, absolutely. What is Mama's YouTube channel called? I can't seem to find it. It's Mama's Life. Um... I can try to put a, when this is over, because I don't know how to do it right now, I'll try to put a link to it. But um, it's called Mamaw's Life. Yeah, National Enquirer loves alien stories. Birds of a feather. Susie, do you still want or need mods? Yes, I do. And I don't know how to make somebody a mod. I don't know how to do it. So I, I'll i get with you. And I was going to get with you. And I've just been so busy the last couple of days. But I definitely want to get with you. I need to get a couple. Like today, so far, we've been good. But Is it bad that I had to put my hand into a pointing fing finger to check the accuracy of that statement? <laughs> oh, you guys. Yes, that, the official attack dog. That might be it. That's an insult to attack dogs. Oh, wait, did I type that out? Yeah, did you did you type that out loud? <laughs> uh. What she did was intentional. It wasn't dumb or an accident. Oh, no, no. I at first I thought this woman is stupid, but she's not. I don't believe she is. I have went and read other blogs I've you know really paid attention and I I think she's very smart 
okay, Susan P., I'll, I'll get with you too. As soon as I figure out how to do it, I, I just don't know how. There's so much stuff I don't know how to do. Hi from Sweden. Great video. Thank you. <laughs> Even I knew that they weren't best friends. <laughs> Hi, Carol. First time here. Gosh, you picked a not so fun one, huh? I'm, I'm really planning one for tomorrow. It might be Sunday, but I'm hoping I get one out tomorrow and it's going to be fun. And then I want to do also one like a getting to know you, but y'all know me. I want to get to know you. So I'm going to come up with some questions and I want to ask my chat. So it's just going to be kind of a question and answers, but kind of you can ask me, I'm going to ask you and all that. So we're going to do that in the next day or two also, because I'm ready for something that's fun. I, we got to fight Scientology and I got to figure out how to do it without fighting Stephanie Hutchison's because she's getting on my nerves. Yep. Yeah. Hi, Carrie Ann. I didn't see her, but she's, oh, there she is. Carrie Ann is a sweetheart too. Not a, <laughs> Stephanie better not ever mess with Carrie Ann either. And then leave Marilyn alone and Liz and I could name off a bunch of them. She just better leave people alone. She needs to step, uh, step away, sit her ass down. Marilyn was so courageous to put what she did out there like that. Yeah. On yesterday's stream, Marilyn revealed some marriage struggles that she had years ago. Yeah. And she didn't need to, but I understand. And I'd have probably done it too. I was sitting there last night. Hmm. Let's see. One of these days I'll have to tell the story about how I got arrested. Because that would be one they'd want to do, wouldn't it? I spent 19, I think, no. 19, 21, something like that. 19, I think, hours in jail. I'll tell you the story. It's kind of humorous. It'd be funnier if it happened to her, not me. But <laughs> You're not wrong. Cricket, do you still want to do an interview? Cricket, do you still want to do an interview? Cricket, do you still want... I'm just sitting there and I'm thinking, is Cricket going, no, I don't freaking want to do an interview. Or is she like, sure. <laughs> you know? She's taking notes, y'all. <laughs> I haven't even watched the interview, well, the two that he's been on. I'm That's on the agenda tonight. I couldn't do it yesterday. I mean, yesterday I was so... Ugh. I couldn't even do this yesterday. I had it all ready to go on live last night. Well, about seven. And I told my husband, I said, I can't do it. If I go on right now, what would have happened was I would have torn these pages in a million pieces and ranted, ranted. And I write this stuff down so that I don't get in trouble. <laughs> that mamma said that whenever I say stuff that she can tell that I'm really mad but that I say stuff nicely. I think that, that might not be an exact quote, but it's close. And I said, well, you know what I'm doing is I am editing myself in my head and on my papers. And when I'm looking at this, I'm not always reading it word for word. I'm picking out certain words and I'll have certain words highlighted. Like that tells me to say this word instead of that word. Or this word instead of these words, you know, because if I'd have went on last night, I would have either hit a thousand subs or four. <laughs> because it would depend on how it was received. Yeah, because these wonderful people are threatening her and everyone. <laughs> 
Yeah, I bet Cricket is thrilled. <laughs> I cried too, and Marilyn felt she needed to explain the intimate details of her marriage to an audience. Stephanie is a horrid woman looking for a way to hurt people through public shaming. Absolutely. And I, I'm telling you guys, I agree with Marilyn. For some reason, they like to go after Marilyn. I think it's because she's so loved. You know, people love her. And to me, I would be like, I ain't going after her. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to go after the one that everybody loves. I'll go after this Susie bitch over here that people are like, oh, she's nice. I really like her. And the rest of the people going, who? That hag, I don't like her. You know, or who? Just who? Go after the mouthy ones. Marilyn's always nice about it. But for some reason, they want to go after her. Think about the ones that have went after her. Does anybody remember Zero Dark Tony's comment about a towel? Because I do. I read it. Or, well, I did read it. I watched it. And I read it. And I wasn't happy. And I really wanted to go over and tell him a whole lot of stuff. But my dad doesn't even want me to do videos. And he was like, don't. I'm like, but dad, this guy is a monster. I just remember when I didn't know who he was. Remember that? I know who he is now, y'all. So see, I'm learning. Mm. I think Mark Render is waiting for little Davy to go and he wants to take that. Now, I didn't think of that. You know, because they, they've said and, you know, some people have even said that nobody would take over or something like that they would just kind of fall back on the wackadoodles all his written crap but they're gonna have somebody right so that might be but didn't i mean renders getting kind of old isn't he i mean I wonder how old he is. I don't know how old he is. I need to look that up. Because I'm 57 and I keep thinking that he's got to be older than me, right? Surely. I mean, yeah, right? I don't know. I'll look it up. She went private. Good. What stinks is Marilyn getting ahead of it because Scientology was after her but a never end who's supposed to be helping people. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I can still see Stephanie's stuff on Twitter or X or whatever. I can't, I can't see, I can see her name. Like if somebody mentioned her or something, I can see that, but I can't see any of her stuff. So. When I looked, it said private. Okay. I think if you click on my name, it gives you the option to mod me, but I'm not sure. You may have to go directly through YouTube instead of StreamYard or whatever. I think that I do. I'm not for sure, but let me see here. Whoops. I'm clicking on it, but it's not letting me do anything, so... <laughs> but you could probably tell because your name and stuff keeps flashing up there. It's not letting me do it. I'll have to look straight through YouTube and see what I can do because I'll definitely do that. <laughs> Bite me. Will she be saying that to people asking for help from the aftermath? Probably. You have to be out of StreamYard on your live. Then you can click the name and make it and make them a mod. Okay. Okay. I'll have to figure it out. I, I'll get with somebody and have them talk me through it. That's how I have to do everything is get somebody to talk me through it or, or watch YouTube videos that tell me how to do it. <sighs> so like in the regular Yahoo app. Okay. Marilyn, hey, girl. We love you. We've been talking about you. 
We just love you. And I mailed you a little package today. So I can't wait till you get it. It's nothing, you know, it's silly, silly stuff. But there's one little thing in there that I think is funny. And I can't wait for you to get it. Said it should be there Tuesday. Yeah, it has to go through YouTube, okay? You're loving the birds chirping outside. I know, right? I'm surprised you can't, like, my husband was out there on the tractor earlier, and I keep hearing all these noises, and I'm like, how much of that is getting picked up? But I've got these windows open behind me, and I just love the fresh air and, and sitting here with the breeze and hearing my birds. I'm going to do some lives out on our porch. We have a huge porch. Our house is... 56 I think feet long and 35 feet deep and our porch goes the whole length of the front and about half or about actually about two-thirds of the side of one side and I've got it all like little sections decorated different ways like I have a little section that's for the kids and there's games and we've got a place to hang a tv which I don't leave it out there because we get a lot of wind here and I don't want the TV getting blown off the wall and everything. But yeah, there's like a little section for the kids and there's a little section for, for the men to sit and, you know, maybe have a, a beer or a glass of wine or coffee or whatever. And there's a little table that Mark and I sometimes sit at and have coffee. And then there's a little section on this back behind here that is mine. And I tell everybody it's mine. You don't come in there unless you're invited. It's mine and I'll I've got an easel and sometimes I'll take my stuff out there and paint or I'll sit out there and drink coffee or iced tea or whatever and visit whether it be on the computer or on the phone or if I have a friend over or one of my daughters or both of my daughters I used to have my mom and that porch is like it's like three, three or four rooms, really. It's huge, you know. So you'll really hear the birds when we're out there. Yes. When Mike Render gets done using Stephanie, he will just have her removed from the board. Yeah. Just like Aaron. <laughs> I couldn't resist y'all. We know we can't talk about anything if, if, if Aaron's name is not brought into it because they can't talk about anything. <laughs> Dylan and Liz. As well as bring up Marilyn Holmes' personal life. I think she saw the storm from the first blog. Thought, sure, stir the shit some more. Absolutely. And there's my Marilyn. She's the sweetest lady. You guys, I just love her. Susie, you got arrested? Yes, that's a story for another day. It was dumb. I, it was kind of like a... Kind of like the protesters where, you know, they get arrested and then there's no charges brought. They just sit in jail for a while. It happened to me the long story short of it was they said that I bounced a check for $50, which I did not. I knew I didn't. Um, but I had made people mad at the newspaper and all of a sudden there was this arrest warrant that was brought up from 12 or 13 years before. And the place where they said I wrote the check to was a place that my mom worked at and she worked in the office. Well, if I had, I wouldn't have, but if I had bounced a check there, my mom would have seen it. And first of all, she'd have yanked a knot in my ass. But second, she'd have called me up and said, get your butt over here and take care of this check now. I would have never, ever have went to the DA or, you know, anything. But I didn't write a check that bounced. So when it came time that I went in for my arraignment in front of the judge, they couldn't produce a check. Not a copy of the check, nothing. They had a check number and an amount from 12 or 13 years ago and the place that it was written to, nothing else. So it got thrown out. I got my 
money back because I had to pay like $1,600 to get out. And then I had to be there for the arraignment. And it was a whole weird thing. But anyway, but yeah, I got arrested. So, but it was really interesting. And I will tell the story because there's a lot of little funnies that goes along with it. <laughs> yeah, George Massey, don't go crying to Maryland. Susie can be spicy. She's tattling on me, Marilyn. She's tattling on me for being spicy. Oh, and looky here. George is 2D flowing. She, they're tattling on George, too. The, now, who knew, y'all? <laughs> you think Marilyn's the mom or something? I think I'm older than her. <laughs> Pretty sure. I think I'm older than everybody. Oh. I said, I might be the oldest YouTuber because my granddaughter, I don't think of myself as a YouTuber. I mean, I guess technically, but that, uh, she says, my grandma's a YouTuber. And then my other little granddaughter, Emma, she's 10. And she said, you're getting so popular. <laughs> uh, I said, well, I'm trying. <laughs> mm. I won't let them watch it though. I said, you can only watch the ones that, that say Veda's in it. <laughs> and I, I've offered to let them come on and, and um, a couple of them, their parents won't let them be on YouTube. And I completely understand completely. So Veda, we let her, Megan and Curtis let her, but I don't think they really had a choice because she's so funny. You know what she asked for for Christmas? A camera to stream with for YouTube. So she's she's six. She'll be seven coming up. No. Yeah. She's going to get ready to turn seven. And she, um, yeah, that's what she asked for was a camera. And we got it for her. We didn't buy her a big fancy one. We bought one that was for a kid. But it is a one that says it's for streaming to YouTube. So. She's going to have her own little channel eventually. <laughs> yes. Kiss and make up. <laughs> Look at you snitching on me. Yep. <laughs> Girl, trust me when it comes to Alex. This is my nice. He hasn't seen my mean yet. There's a seat right here. <laughs> You could fit right here. Look, we could be buddies. <laughs> or I can divide the screen. You know, you don't even have to really come here, but we can split it down the middle right here. One on each side. Or you could just come sit on this little part back here on the on the porch and we could talk. <laughs> you snitched on yourself by doing it in public. <laughs> Can you be putting time out for 2D flowing? Not on this one. <laughs> I let them. I think it's a combination of Marilyn being very loved and a perception they have that Marilyn is weak. If they only knew that lady is not weak. You know, they say it's the quiet ones that you got to watch out for. She's kind of quiet sometimes. As in polite. I mean, she talks. I don't mean that, you know, she don't say anything. She says a lot. <laughs> and she even gets a little, a little salty. She's got a little spice to her. But she's also polite. A lot more polite than me. I'm too seasoned in the newspaper. I, I never started smoking, but I drink coffee. I could wake up at two o'clock in the morning, drink two or three cups of coffee and go back to sleep. I mean, it's like water to me. You know, it's newspaper people drink so much coffee and cuss. I don't know why. But it's like Scientology. Have you seen how much they cuss? I mean, it's like the norm. I mean, remember whenever... Aaron like said the C word to Tommy and Tommy was like freaked out over it. He was not happy about it because like to him, that's very, very offensive. And to most people it is. Aaron didn't mean it like offensive. It was just a word, you know? 
And I mean, I didn't like him saying it, but I also knew that, I mean, I was, I was like, Oh, you know, but then I was like, it's not like that to him. You know, it's not like that to them. So, oh, Hef, I think you've been quite polite. Yes. I, you, you were very polite. But I could read between the lines a little bit. And not, like a lot of times I'm there. I might not be saying anything. I come on and say hi, everybody, you know, and I might comment here or there. But I'm usually there from the minute it starts to the minute it ends. And I might just like be laying on that pillow like, ugh, you know, like about to pass out but can't go to sleep. But I see what you're saying. Yep. Everybody loves Marilyn, but Marilyn isn't weak. Nope. Not a bit. I guess Mike Render is really, or is really to hide away with the ties to the lawyer. While dealing with the aftermath show, Ex Scientto, who also happened to be with Mike Render on Child USA. Yeah. There's some stuff on that one too, y'all. There's there's some uh, questionable stuff going on there too, which I'm sure you know, but I haven't done it yet because oh, I want to do some fun stuff. Light drop. <laughs> yes. Now, Hef, let's not get carried away. I'm sitting there trying to make us believe that you try to reel it in sometimes girl reeling it in means that you've already tossed it out and you're like oh and you reel it back in right no or maybe it's this way i don't know but anyway i ain't never seen you toss it out and then reel it back in you might choose not to toss it out but once it's out there i ain't seen you reel it back in <laughs> and that's why i love you Yep, they are mistaken. Yes, Hef, you have been very good. I'm teasing you. Your dad is right. What he's looking for is people to talk about him. The best way to deal with him is to not give him a voice. That's true. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I think Marilyn's handling of Mitch should have disproved that myth of being weak. Susie, Carrie Ann or Marilyn could tell you better how to mod someone. Yeah, I'm going to get with them and get them to do it whenever I can think. I'm so tired tonight. I'm just not even going to do it tonight, but I will. Oh, thank you, but I'm glad you listened to your dad. That guy is a monster. Yeah. He is a monster. I did listen to dad, but oh, it's just like. You know, can't promise that I'll continue to listen to dad forever, but I tell you what. When the whole deal about the uh, cum rag or towel or whatever with Marilyn's face on it. I I think I might could have really took him. <laughs> I really think I could have. You just don't do that. And I can't imagine Marilyn doing anything or Kelly doing anything to deserve that. Mike Rinder is 69. Just looked it up. Thank you. The old fart. He's a little bit older than my husband. Jumping in late and going back to catch up. Very much appreciate your adding your voice to the discussion. You are spot on. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
mother's, I can't pronounce that, Gari, I, I can't hardly see it. I've got to get new glasses. These are new glasses. I haven't had them very long. And they're, I used to have the, um, the ones with the line. And they talked me into getting these. They're not the progressive. Well, they're the new progressive where it starts at one and it goes to another and another and another. But it, this whole bottom part is supposed to be the, the one that magnifies everything. I can't see that. You notice I'm doing it like this. So what I've done is I made me a little Timu order. And I ordered different strengths of just reading glasses. And whenever I do my lives, if I'm just talking, I'm just going to either wear my regular glasses or none. And then if I'm reading the chat and stuff, then I'll put the reading glasses on. I'm going to test it before and see what strength I need. Cause I don't even know, but I mean, they're reading glasses. There's some of them like a dollar or something, two, three dollars. So I'm going to just try that. Cause I don't want to have to go spend another, you know, $500 or whatever on a pair of glasses. It's ridiculous. I mean, I just got these and they test out to what my prescription tests do, but I can't see. But you all, so you all get the vision of up my nose all the time. I'm like, oh, and if you ever think you see a booger in there, it's my nose ring. It has a little knot on the, on the back of it that you twist. So it's not a booger. I really make sure it's not a booger before I come on. That's because Marilyn is the nicest, sweetest, and authentic SP in this sector of the galaxy, which they mistake for weakness. Amen. Because they're stupid. <laughs> there's a way to make people mods on youtube without being in a live it's hard to find but it's doable okay carrie ann i'll i'll look at that alley oop 12 30 i'm marilyn marilyn says she's multitasking but she's listening now you just listen girl you just do your thing you making biscuits <laughs> no you're probably cleaning up your house because Miss Kelly's going to be there. And I don't care how clean your house is. If you're anything like me, you will clean it until she gets there. And then it'll still not be clean enough. Because that's what I do. No matter how clean my house is. And right now it's not clean. But no matter how clean it is, when the holiday or anything rolls around or we're having people over for dinner, no matter how clean it is, I clean till the minute they get there. And then I say, excuse the mess. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to clean, even though I have been cleaning around the clock. But <laughs> I love you too, Marilyn. I really do, girl. No, she. I haven't seen her actually bring up Marilyn. But who's next? Right? She's going to run out of board members for the SPT Foundation soon. And then I fully expect her to go after anybody that she thinks, you know, that she can go after. And they're probably digging up stuff on a lot of people because they're like baby Osa. They, they want to be Scientologists. I mean, you know, they want to be a cult. I don't know. I mean, and she uses more Scientology phrases than any of the second gens. It's like they're trying to, you know, forget it and move past it. And they, I mean, like Reese said, sometimes she can't find the words. And so she'll say, I'm going to have to use the Scientology word for it. I get that. And like all of us, I know that y'all are doing the same thing I'm doing and you're figuring out a lot from just hearing it, but I pay attention and try to figure out what is fair game. What is finding their ruin? What is, you know, fill in the blank. Right. But I don't go talking it, you know, now I'll tell my daughter sometimes I'll see, you know, you're not going to believe this is what they do. And she'll go, what's that mean? I'll go, well, it means, blah, 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 you know, like I'll explain to her what it means, but I don't know, Stephanie, like for somebody that's never 
been in Scientology. She sure wants everybody to think she is. Over $50. What's that? I forgot. I think we said something. Oh, yeah, the check. <laughs> yeah, the check that I supposedly bounced. Yes. They said that $50 or more was a felony. So I had to go to jail. <laughs> Susie, you are popular. Not like you, girl. And that's okay. We got you. That's what we need. I really don't care. I mean, of course, I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to have you know, more subscribers. And, and then if I get monetized, I'll monetize my channel because I'm paying like $45 a month for my, um, stream yard. And I pay, I don't remember what $14 a month for, for an editing deal and that I haven't used yet. And I pay for Photoshop that, so I can start trying to make my own little, whatever they are called. My mind's gone y'all, but Anyway, I'm trying to, you know, I'm spending, by the time it's all said and done, I'm probably spending, I don't know, close to a hundred dollars a month. And so if I can get monetized, I'm going to, you know, with ads or whatever. I mean, and I, I am thinking about starting some memberships, but I'm going to beg Marilyn to help me. <laughs> so I got to butter her up y'all <laughs> rub some butter on those biscuits. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't know how to do that stuff either. I don't know how to do um, any of that. I don't know how to do my little like emojis and stuff and or what I would even want to do. So oh yeah, you're feeding your dragon. I saw pictures. we go having a protesting expert on a stream oh yeah <laughs> apostate albert <laughs> does he look like is he related to that lawyer you had on the other day or look like him that's what i'm wondering just wondering <laughs> I can't wait to see it. I'd be honored to sit beside you, babe. Well, I'm going to bring you on here one of these days and we're going to have a chit chat. How about that? That would be fun. Yeah, my almost five-year-old watches YouTube for kids all the time. She sometimes tells me, Mommy, you only get a hug if everybody likes and subscribes. <laughs> it was like that, uh, you know, and... I said, well, what are you going to, uh, on one of the videos she's on, I said, well, what are you going to tell everybody? And, and she said, when I get my channel, I can subscribe. And I'm like, well, what about mine? <laughs> I was like, how about grandma? I mean, I think I had like a hundred subscribers at the time. I was like, please, somebody. <sighs> yep. It is painful to say what you really want. Oh, tomorrow you have a board member from the After Wrath Foundation. Red wig and mustache. And <laughs> oh, my goodness. There's a 90-year-old YouTuber out there called Gallery 22. Oh, wow. I guess we're too old for the big red button. I guess not. I hadn't heard that. No, wait a minute. Somebody did. Something I was watching the other day was talking about somebody that's can't remember if it was that. Can't remember. But I do remember him talking about <laughs> not Mrs. Bitcherson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never reel it in, Hef. Never. Yeah. Is he related to JJJ? <laughs> uh. Tomorrow's guest isn't. Okay. <laughs> Marilyn brings receipts absolutely <laughs> I made Mitch my bitch 
girl. Mm, I love you. <laughs> he was easy. Yes, you did. Yeah. Carrie or Carrie Ann, he um was talking about a comrade. And I think he said it about Kelly too. I was thinking that, you know, wouldn't have to be a rag, you know, or a towel or whatever. I mean, probably like a remnant, you know, like a little quilting square. Probably be plenty big. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cried on my pillow for a while, but can laugh about it now. I'm still waiting for my come down. <laughs> promises, promises. <laughs> I'm appalled that anybody would say that too. I'm glad she's laughing now, but I I still can't laugh over it. I I mm. <laughs> No. This is like nervous laughter. This is, you know, like Yeah. You've been cleaning for days already. It's clean, girl. It's clean. That's what my husband says to me. He's like, good grief. Just stop. He said, I can't breathe for the bleach and the, and the pine saw and the pledge and, you know, the candles and everything. Because I'm just like, what if you can smell the cat? I mean, he goes, you scoop the litter every day. Stop it. You know, just stop. And I'm like, but what? We need to stop. And so... <laughs> Yep. People think it's a booger. Marilyn, you 2D flowing me now. <laughs> uh, Stephanie hasn't gone after me, but she has gone after the second gins and that burns me. You know, burns my, you know what? Yes, we do. But Marilyn, I would not put it past her, babe. I wouldn't put it past her. I think she's going to go after all of the SPTV board and Aaron, you know, Liz Gale, Aaron, Dylan Gill, Aaron, you know, but I don't think anybody's safe. I think that she's just going to keep on. She gets off on it. And I just imagine that she's getting a little pat on the, on the head, you know, from Render. You were a meanie earlier. I haven't been on YouTube today. I'm going, I'm getting ready to go in there and just like completely veg out. I had so many errands to run today and my husband did take me to eat though. We went and had rib crib, which I brought literally 95% of it home because we got the um, bacon cheese fries and I ate half of those like literally cut them down the middle and said, do not touch this half. These are mine and ate them. And he, he had one little bite left. He's like, you want this one? I'm like, no, it's on your half. You can have it, but you can't have what's over here. <laughs> if Marilyn wants to give you some love, he guesses he can share. Wow. I have 63 people watching. Took me over six months of streaming almost every day to get that many. Well, now I'm like nervous. Fakes a lot. No, <laughs> I really don't get nervous. I, where I get nervous is because I'll get tongue tied because I really am not a public speaker. And so I just, I get nervous because I get tongue tied. Okay. Um, let me check and see what Mark's got going. I don't think we're going anywhere tonight. I'm praying we're not going anywhere tonight. But if, if we're not, I'll get back with you in just a little bit and let you know. And maybe we can figure out how to get me a couple mods because I just really feel like I've had a couple of trolls that have stepped in. And uh, I just don't feel like putting up with them. I mean, if they just are like being trolly trolls, you know, I don't care. But if, if they're mean 
I don't even really care if they're mean to me, but if you know how trolls will get mean to the chat and that is not okay with me. Never going to be okay. Oh, good. It takes less than an hour to set up memberships. Well, good. That'd be something we could definitely do. I got to figure out like some emojis that I could do. Somebody said I need boobs <laughs> since I don't have any. So, you know, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of picture Apostate Albert looking like Duncan. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, but that's kind of how I picture him. Late, didn't get a notification. Ugh. You know, whenever I, whenever I go live, it always says that they'll give notifications right before I start. And that's when I get notifications for things actually usually right after they start. If I get the notification at all, it's usually right after they start. But I saw a little deal flash on the top of my screen while ago that said that I was live on my channel. I'm like, really? Wow. <laughs> yes. Tune in tomorrow for Stephanie Bitcherson, Bitcherson from the After Wrath Foundation. <laughs> I will be there. I don't think we're going anywhere tomorrow. So I'm going to be one of those. It's like refresh, 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 <laughs> refresh. Looking to see if you're on. Oh. Yes, he did. He said that about a few women. I mean, he's not even original, right? Just not even original. If you got to keep saying the same insult over and over kind of loses its power, I guess. It's kind of like, I don't think that Stephanie's really, I think she's smart. I don't mean that, y'all. But I don't think she's clever enough to have came up with the gaggle of protesters. You know, I don't, I don't think she was, I don't think she's clever. I think she's smart. I only have 59 subs, but I haven't been able to put up any content lately. Pretty sure I subbed to yours. I'll go check, but I'm pretty sure I subbed to yours. I think I did like immediately. I try to sub to like everybody, like, you know, everybody. I'll go through and like with my chat, I'll go through whenever they've, or with the comments after the, after the live, when people leave comments, I'll go through and hit their little picture and see if, if they have a, a channel that they're doing anything on. And that's another thing, y'all, anybody that's got a channel, whether you've got one sub or a million subs, go in on my channel after this is over and leave a comment. You can tell people that you have a channel and that you want subs, but do it on the, you know, the comments, not the chat. Do it on that. And all they have to do is come in and click on you and it'll take them straight to your channel and they can sub and do it. I mean, that's an open invitation from now on. I can't imagine that I'll ever say not to. So, um, I mean, maybe if I, I'm not ever going to get that many, but you know, seriously, if I turned into Aaron tomorrow or in 20 years, I might have to say, okay, maybe we need to slow up on that one, but probably not. But seriously, if you have a channel, go on my comments and leave a message saying you want subs. You don't even have to put your link in it. it. All you have to do is if, you know, if you're on your deal, it'll take them straight to it when they click on it. Cricket told me. You've had a few people trying to get you on the screen with them. One day I will. I just need decent equipment. Not really. You know what? I'm on, I'm on an, an iPad. Some people are just on like their iPhone and stuff. You really don't need all that that many, you know, high dollar equipment or anything. I did buy a, a little ring light on Timu for $3 and 40 something cents. So I've got that and my iPad, but I'm not going to spend any more money. I'm right now. I've got it on, you know, StreamYard and on, on uh, stuff to edit and stuff. Cause that's where I want to, to spend my money right now. I'm just not going to put the money in. My iPad is an iPad Pro, but it's just that it's bigger and I'm so blind that it's like 
I can see a little bit better, but not even, I didn't buy it because of YouTube. I bought it because when I'm watching YouTube videos, <laughs> I bought it before I did this. So <laughs> what are the goddamn clean pants? <laughs> I know, right? Ooh, somebody's got to wash that damn rat. Right? Mm, she is funny. And they think that, <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, this is the quiet ones. It's the quiet ones. See, Marilyn, everybody loves you. <laughs> what the hell did they do now? Well, it depends on which who. <laughs> you're going to have to go back and watch this one if you're talking about the After Wrath <laughs> Foundation or more true Stephanie Hutchison, but you know, what don't they do? More bullshit. Oh, a revenge story. Yeah, you'll have to tell it. <laughs> yeah, somebody challenged her and all she could say is bite me. <laughs> Oh, Lord, that is, she just wants to be relevant, y'all. That's what they want. And, you know, I have a nephew that was kind of a pain in the ass as a kid. And it's kind of still one. But his doctors, his psychologists and all these people told his parents that even bad attention is attention. And this is the same with these people. Which, I mean, was sad for this kid because he got plenty of attention, good attention, but it was never enough. So when he wasn't getting good attention, he'd do bad things to get bad attention. Sounds real familiar. Yeah, they have been acting more and more like Scientology. But, I mean, think about it. If they are seeing your face every time... They have a blissful orgasm. Then <laughs> oh, I'd say you're winning. <laughs> no, thank you. 69 watching now. She better watch it. Last time I said, bite me, they did. You know, I have a friend that, I mean, she's actually the mother of one of my ex-boyfriends from high school, but we've still remained friends and I cannot stand her daughter-in-law. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that she's married to my ex-boyfriend because I cannot stand him worse than I cannot stand her. But anyway, the mother and her got into it. And the mother, who is like 80, said, bite me. And the girl bit her and drew blood. So I might have had something to say to her, to her face in the bus line at school when we were picking up our kids. And, uh. It might have included saying, bite me, and then saying, oh, I better watch it, because the last time somebody said that to you, you did it. And then I might have said, that if you bite me, you're going to need new teeth. And if you bite her again, you're going to need new teeth. And you're going to have to count them to make sure that you pass them all because they're going to go right down your throat and come out your ass. And there may have been other things that was said, but that was the part I'll repeat. Mm -hmm. I don't know about anyone else, but I'm not biting her. <laughs> I don't want that taste in my mouth. <laughs> I ain't biting her either. Look, it would taste like rancid gravy and regret. <laughs> uh. Got to go mod, y'all. Sending everyone love. We love you, too. I was thinking hot dog. Oh, hot dog water. <laughs> oh. Mm -mm -mm. 
<laughs> that is brilliant. <laughs> and it's like, now every time Nora says, oh, no hot dog, I'm going to think of Stephanie. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Poor Dylan. Who knew that he was going to put Stephanie all up in her feels by saying, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, yes, you do need to get up in time for her stream. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hef, did I show you the thumbnail I made? Oh boy. I was, I've been trying to work on some thumbnails kind of in advance, <laughs> like in case I need them, just practicing. I'm not very good at it, but I'm trying. I have a whopping 29. Well, if you don't have any content, that's not bad. Yeah, you won't be able to see the comments on the tiny screen. Yeah. Um, I have, you know, my, like my iPad, but that's it. I, I just can't, I can't afford all that. I, I mean, I've got some Timu stuff that like I did buy, I haven't used it yet, but I did buy a mic stand with a mic that you can put on it from Timu. I mean, I think I've spent like $40 on Timu and it's all still in the bedroom. And I bought, a, it's not really neon, but it looks like neon sign that says, but first coffee, which I thought was so cute. And I haven't got my studio set up yet, so it's not there. Inappropriate heifer loves spicy Susie. I love spicy heifer. <laughs> when are you not spicy? I've never so far known you to not be spicy. So but we can get along good because I'm telling you, I, I do edit myself, y'all. I edit myself. Yeah, you'd love to see me and Hef together. I would too. We're gonna have to do it. We're gonna have to do it. And find like a topic that's funny, you know, so that we can like be funny and not have to like, you know, be careful. Heck yeah, we will. I'm serious. I really do. You're on the list. You're the first name on my list. Marilyn's on the list too. I think she's second. Um I can't remember who else I've got on the list. There's a couple people that I don't think I'll ever, that I'll ever get like Reese for one, you know? And, uh, but yeah, I mean like Nora and Liz Ferris and Liz Gale. I mean, I've got a list, but it, it hefts on the, on the list. She's the top one. It's none of her business. What Aaron does in his private life. Well, that's what I said. You know, it's like if, that's between him and Heather. And how does she know that Heather doesn't like it or doesn't agree with it or isn't doing it herself? I don't know that she is, but I don't know that she's not. And I don't care. I'm generally not worried about what anybody else is doing in their bedroom. I'm too worried, you know, just, I mean, me and Mark's getting old, y'all. And I'm like, and we, this is something that needs to keep happening, dude. We cannot just like get lazy. So, you know, I'm too worried about my own bedtime, fun time, whatever, to worry about what anybody else is doing. I don't care what any of y'all is doing. You can tell me if you want to, but I don't care. <laughs> but listen, guys, I'm going to have to get off of here. I keep watching. I know Mark's going to be in here any minute and wanting me to fix some dinner might make him eat we have all that rib crib because he didn't eat anything either we, I mean, it was good i took a couple bites but those fries were so good but uh, anyway but i'm gonna get off of here i love you guys i am working on something that is not quite so debbie downer for tomorrow and i really do want to do the whole getting to know you because i want to get to know you all like, I talk about me every time I'm on here. I tell little tidbits about my life, but I don't know about all of y'all's. And I, some of you, I see things, and I see you on, you know, Reese's channel or or um, crickets or whatever. But, 
you know, I want to know more about you guys. So anyway, but I'm going to go. We, I love you guys. Toodles. Aw, it was great spending more time with me. Thanks. And I am going to get better. I'm really going to get better about being able to manage the chat while I'm doing my talking. Because I don't like to do this whole, do the whole talk and then go to the chat. But right now, I'm just not good at it. I, I'm, you're, you're watching me learn, you know. Aaron had said before, you know, to start bad. And I thought, boy, that really gives me, <laughs> you know start bad. Okay. I can, I can do that. I can do bad y'all, but I, I'm going to go. I love you. And I'm love seeing you all talk amongst each other's and go after this goes on to, you know, for the replay thing, go on there and leave a, ch a message about your channels. Cause if I'm not subscribed to you, I will. And we get a lot of people that come in on the replay and they'll subscribe too. So, okay. Do that. And that's an open invitation, okay? So it's not just today. That's any day. You can do it every day. I don't care. Do it every day. Because maybe somebody will watch one tomorrow that didn't watch one today. And then they'll go subscribe to you. So every voice raises the volume. <laughs> See you later, Marilyn. I'll get back with you later. I love you guys. Bye.